In this segment, we will solve the same example where we had a lot size of 50, but here we will have a safety stock of 10 as well. So here we will have an MPS whenever the projected available balance falls below the safety stock value that is 10. So we have initial inventory of 50, no MPS, so 50 plus zero minus 19 would be 31. And 31 minus 17 is 14, so that is greater than 10, so we don't need an MPS. But again, as a recall that in, in the frozen zone, we will be considering the customer orders to calculate PAB, so 50 minus 19, 31 minus 17, so now we have inventory of 14, customer orders of 15, so that is minus one, that is of course less than 10. So we will have an MPS of 50 here. So 14 plus 50 minus 15 that will be 49. So 49 minus greater of these two, is 25, so we will have 24 available. So 24 minus 24 is zero, but in this case that is less than 10. So we do need to have an MPS here. So 24 plus 50 minus 24 is 50. So 50 minus greater of these two, 50 minus 23 is 27. So now the inventory available at the end of period six is 27, that is greater than 21. So that is six, but that six is less than 10. That is the safety stock. So we do need to have an MPS for period seven. So 27 plus 50, 77 minus 21 is 56. So 56 minus 21 is 35. So we don't need any MPS in period eight. And 35 minus 25 is 10. So that is exactly equal to the safety stock. So we don't need an MPS here as well. And of course we do need an MPS of 50 in period 10, so 10 plus 50, 60 minus 25 is 35. So then available to promise is calculated using the same logic. So for period one, that will be equal to 50 uh, plus zero minus customer orders till next MPS. So 50 minus 36 will be 14. Then this 50 and customer orders till next MPS. So we have 15 plus 11, 26. So 50 minus 26 will be 24. Then we have this MPS in period five. So customer orders till next MPS are these nine plus five, so 50 minus uh, 14 will be equal to 36. Then this 50 and customer orders till next MPS are this 2 plus 1, so 50 minus 3 will be 47. So cumulative ATP for period 1 will be 14, for period 3 will be 14 plus 24, that is 38. 38 plus 36 will be 74 for period five and 74 plus 47 will be 121 in period seven. So you can see that these values are of course uh, different. So we had MPS in period three, six, eight and 10 and here we have period three, five, seven and 10. And you can also see that uh, the available to promise values are we had 14, 15, 43, and 49, 
and the safety stop we have 14, 24, 36, and 47. But that is generally the case. The make to stop organizations generally do have some amount of safety stop, uh, but uh, the make to order organizations make to order, so maybe they generally don't make safety stop. So for which types of products is discrete ATP more logical to be calculated and for which types of products is ATP more suitable. So discrete ATP is used for perishable items that have a specific expiry date, for example, food items, medicines, etc. And cumulative ATP is used for non-perishable items like your hardware items like motors, fans, pumps, and products like those. So in such cases, it can be used to meet backlogs and accept new orders. So for example, an ATP of uh, uh, previous MPS, so the uh, ATP based on previous MPS can be used to meet uh, the demand for the next MPS. And vice versa. 